Hi guys, it is Wednesday, March 26th. I have the lovely husband behind me, who is homesick today, so he's making himself feel better by playing Diablo 3. <laughs> and I got a recommendation, like I said yesterday, to play Space Pirates and Zombies, also known as Spaz. So we're gonna give it a try. I have not played this yet, so uh, what you're seeing is me trying it for the first time. So this could be very amusing. All right, turn the volume up a little bit. Continue. Oh, I may need to change this. I didn't realize it was gonna go full screen. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to change this. Okay. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna make this smaller. Space Pirates and Zombies, Min Max Games, it's a two-person company, and we have been working out of our homes for the past two years to create Spaz. I'm going to alt tab make sure, yes, this is still good, okay. To create Spaz, why is this not showing up anymore? Come on. Uh, Min Max was created because we couldn't find games like Spaz anymore. We decided that if we couldn't find the games we liked, we would build them. Creating Spaz has been a marathon of hard days and nights, but it is also the completion of a lifelong dream for both of us. By purchasing Spaz, you are providing us with the means to expand its content and to stay in business long enough to bring you future indie titles. Thanks for playing, and please tell your friends about us. Press space to continue. Space, pirates, and zombies, and bounty hunters. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I can switch out of full screen. WSD. Okay, well, I'm certain that there's a tutorial of some kind, so we'll Okay. Here you can decide how large you want the galaxy to be. The larger the galaxy, the less commodities each system will have. Smaller galaxies have more condensed experience, but can be more difficult as the level range between any two stars is larger. Well, let's make it smaller. So what's the max? It's 300, so the minimum is 150. Let's do 175. No, not 4, There we go. Okay, difficulty. Um, yes, we'll do... Difficulty... Let's do normal. This is the recommended first play. Okay. Uh, bounty hunter population. Normal, low, none, high. Okay, let's go default. Tech availability. You'll have to hunt around a little bit. Tech should come available. Figure really, really. Tech, low, default, high. Very high. Okay, let's do default. We're going to do the tutorial. Randomized tech progression. Okay. All right, well, let's just do the general default one, I think. Okay, and sure, I'm not gonna worry about generating this again. I am here, apparently. Start the game. Hiding goodies. Very nice. Also, tea and potato chips, breakfast of champions. Data and crew pickups don't have any weight. Overall game really does not change the arena offense. They play the same. Okay. Oh, stirring up trouble. Okay. Let's 
space is a vast and desolate frontier, covering a seemingly infinite distance. Even the speed of light is dwarfed by the unimaginable scale of our galaxy. It took nearly 250 years to bridge the void between Earth and its closest neighboring star. Mankind had mastered the folding of space-time, but relied on the use of warp gates. Massive drone ships journeyed through deep space for centuries, deploying pairs of warp gates which allowed instantaneous travel between connections. Warp gate travel had not become commonplace until the discovery of a stable element, number 126. This element contained bizarre transmutable properties, allowing it to be reconfigured into different forms of matter. This made it the most valuable and sought-after commodity in the universe. Mankind quickly became completely dependent on element 126, which the first miners named Rez. Due to the increasing demand for Rez, the warp gate network became privatized. Anyone with ample funding was able to deploy new and unregistered warp gates. Like a new gold rush, convoys of miners traversed the expanding warp network looking for Rez deposits. This drove them closer and closer to the galactic core, where res deposits became richer and richer. A growing number of isolated colonies became unmanageable. As the unique ecologies of each discovered planet intermixed through trade, potential pandemics became a concern. The United Terran Alliance was formed to control interplanetary contamination. They moved to heavily restrict gate access. Military blockades began to screen all trade ships traveling between gates, attacking any unregistered ships that attempted to use them. For a time, the UTA was able to maintain control, but they soon crumbled under the weight of rapid expansionism and bureaucracy. Unable to manage their fleets and borders, the military hierarchy collapsed. Without central leadership, the UTA fleets dissolved into a series of isolated subcells that rarely communicated or traveled beyond local space. Each military subcell now struggles to control their systems by whatever laws they see fit to implement. Despite the enforced isolation, rogues continue the gold rush while refugees amass hidden away from the UTA's eye. They survive within the vast junk fields of an abandoned Earth. There they build a massive flagship named the Clockwork. With it they intend to travel to the galactic core in search of a legendary motherload of rares. This is my ship. Okay, folks, it's that time again. This will be our seventh engine test this week. I don't want to go to bed with radiation burns again tonight, all right? Let's get those puppies fired up good and proper this time. Yes, well, you see, we're lucky the toilet's even flush on this brick. I've managed to bootstrap the induction coil to the main core to boost output, but I don't expect it to maintain a viable reaction. Nuclear particle physics and duct tape do not mingle well, yes? Carl, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Just turn the bloody thing on. The magnetic stabilizer's blue. We have major breaches on decks 6 through 10. Our escort ships are gone and we're venting atmosphere. We have crew casualties. Oh, crewmen can always be replaced. The ship damage, on the other hand. Well, I told you that piece of junk wouldn't hold back an overload. Did you honestly expect any different? Look, look, look what I have to work with here. The blown stabilizer system will have to be replaced before we can even think about trying this again. It's a common part. I'm sure there is another one in the junk field somewhere. We still have a working hangar, so let's fire up the fabricator systems and build a ship to retrieve it. Best space to build a ship. Okay. I have ten goons. That's Ship under Ship construction. So W for forward thrusters. S for rear thrusters. 
thrusters, DNA, side thrusters, X stabilizers. Okay, and then there's a single one too. Okay. Oh, here we go. I sure hope you're paying attention. There will be a quiz after. Nearly everything of importance is marked with the radar, allowing you to see what's off screen. Radar indicators will be pinned to the edge of the screen, showing you the direction to and orientation of other ships. If you get confused as to what you should be doing, you can see your primary ship's log, which we already found. Just about every menu you see will have a help indicator. Click the help indicators to find out useful information about what you're looking at. Okay. <laughs> That should fix the stabilizer, but the overload comprised the structural integrity of the ship more than I initially thought. We can't jump with a breach like this. I've written up an extensive list of the repairs that will have that will have to be satisfied before I'll conduct another test. Meanwhile, I'll be done I'll be in my quarters. Let me know when you're done cleaning up your failure. Oh, you've got to be kidding. I really do hate that man. We're going to need to replace more than just one ship if we expect to cork that hole anytime soon. That's unfortunately easier said than done. The hull damage vented most of our res supply. We even lost all the damn liquor. We need to restock before we can build more ships. There's a mining station in the system. Elsa, you've worked with the miners before. See if you can convince them to let us harvest in their territory. Push space to travel to another location. Okay. Warp. Here. Contact with the mining base, they're all drunk on industrial paint strippers, so it wasn't too hard to convince them to let us harvest some reds. We'll have to be careful around here. The mining base is automated and won't think twice about slicing us in half with that mining beam. Let's siphon what we need and move on. Your prospecting request has been granted. Please refrain from tampering with the automated mining systems. If you happen to be exposed to the vacuum of space, please proceed to the nearest eye wash station and rinse thoroughly. Thank you and have a pleasant day. This should be interesting. That asteroid they're drilling into is even more dense than you are, Elsa. There's no way we can crack it. Only a station station class core mining beam can even come close. We'll have to grab the spill off table scraps. I feel like such a trendy. Maybe you should read this. Other ship is too slow to scout for res on its own, so it deploys a short-range warp beacon that can transfer ships and res back and forth instantly. You can find res by destroying asteroids with weapons fire, mouse one, fly over res to load it into the cargo hold, return to the beacon to automatically transfer res back to the mother ship and process it. You can see your processed res in the upper left corner of the screen. Keep an eye on how much cargo space your ships have. The more full the cargo bay, the slower that ship will go. Be aware that smaller ships do not carry large, cannot carry large deposits of res. If you have a large enough ship, you can always break res apart with weapons fire. Okay. to build the extra ship we're going to need, plus I was able to officially kick ass and salvage another hangar. We should be able to support two ships now. That being the good news, here's the bad news. The explosion all but wiped our construction database and nobody backed up their hard drive. Luckily I was able to recover the data for a small 
single small fighter ship called the Dart. I recommend we build a couple. Our current ships can't even cut butter, let alone stand up against any UTA ships. Well, finally, some progress. Let's see to it that we collect what we need to build two darts. We're not leaving until we have some ships fit for combat. So I'm going to go just to options quickly, and I'm going to go to out of full screen mode. Oh, I have to restart. Okay, then never mind. Here you can fully customize every aspect of your ship designs. By default, your ship will be outfitted with the surface components. Even early on, you'll have access to several different components. Click on the mount icons on the ship to see what you can install. You can modify shields, engines, and reactor. Be sure to read props to each ships whenever you unlock new technology. As your mothership becomes more advanced, additional hangers will be added. Old hangers will be upgraded, allowing you to support larger ships. Okay. <clears throat> Build two dark ships. Okay. Is slightly less pathetic now. We've got what we need. Let's get the hell out of here. So y'all want to pick my stones or run off? Hey, well, you go right ahead there, miss. Even out there, hear me out first. You help us kick these UDA boys in the gym. You mean the boys will fix up that big old ship you got floating around? What do you say? I suppose we can trust these people for finding you don't have any money in your pockets. I'm not really sure we have much of a choice. We're weeks away from repairing the clockwork without their help. We have a small and capable fleet now. Why not? Put it to some I sure hope you're paying okay. attention. There will be a quiz after.
to go here. So we'll do this quest and that'll probably be the end of the video. So right now they're probably up rolling some of their mining control of these fringe worlds around monitors so the bastards just do as the demo. Please let's loot the hell out of this place quickly before they come back. We need to keep an eye on what we're blasting to maximus and backup, so don't be shooting at the green ships. Aqua systems are repaired and they're coming online now, which perhaps is mission the first fires. Okay. This is fine, you get a complete radar view of the battlefield. Select ships with the left and issue attack and move orders with the right. You can draw you to select multiple ships. That's the phone. Page. I'm not directly controlling your ships, the AI kicks in. Okay. Alright. What am I doing? Okay. Select all ships. We have enough to get a few critical systems up to par. We have to choose which upgrades we think are the most important. We should take care of this right away. And get a little bit more Maybe you should read this. Oh, I leveled up. Press F4 to view the resource. Okay. F4. Oh, do I want cannons, beams, or reactor? Low firing weapon. Good for taking down shields. As far as okay, let's do a reactor. Level one. This is a public service announcement. Upgrade these for free. Okay. And let's up.
luck again. Hope you're paying attention. There will be a quiz after. Okay. I need to go here, apparently. And I think that's it. Oh, oh no. Hey, we gotta come more stuff. Alright, alright. Maybe you should read this. 
there's an engineer the ship. Okay. More rogue miners. Okay. More crew members. Thank you. 
Okay, so, uh, this game is insane. Anyway. That space, that's Spaz. Um, I'm probably gonna keep playing this because it's oddly addictive, but... So, that's part two of our science fiction week this week. If you have any more sci-fi games that you want me to try out, leave them in the description, because... Two for two, I'm enjoying them, so that's good. Anywho, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Have a beautiful day.